And now for a special interview on set, we are joined by Tal Kanan, the co-founder and CEO of Clarity Capital, an Israeli investment management firm among the few Israeli investors active in the Palestinian Authority. We also have our intrepid reporter, Daniel Roth, with us here. Thank you so much for being with us both. Well, you do have a very unique combination of experience coming originally from the U.S., spending a lot of your formative years there, then being a former uh, military careerist here in Israel, and then also being a f financier. How does that combination uh, make the interest for you in the Palestinian Authority and investment opportunities there? Well, first of all, we have a financial interest in the Palestinian Authority. We own uh, companies there, and we, um, uh, I'd say, as an Israeli, uh, I think I join the two of you and all of us, we all have a financial interest there. To the extent that uh, the Palestinian economy uh, succeeds, I think life will generally be better for us. Well, in the past, you have been quoted as saying that you believe the Israeli occupation of those lands is uh, costly fi financially. Yeah, I mean, certainly it is. In, in budgetary terms, it's, uh, uh, you know, it, it's clearly very expensive. It costs us billions of dollars. Um, you know, if we had an objective of staying there forever, that would be one thing. If, we, uh, if as the current government has already acknowledged, plan to leave at some point, uh, every year that we don't do it, we are spending a lot of money uh, that we'll never get back. By the way, and every dollar of in infrastructure that we sink in there is going to serve somebody else. Well, let's open <clears> the <throat> conversation now to Daniel Roth, who does look at this movement very closely, actually the BDS movement and the boycott situation. What can you update us on? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's interesting. Uh, there's numbers coming out. This month has been a big month in terms of the conversation about the boycott movement and BDS. And of course, there's BDS that calls for uh, uh, full boycott, divestment, and sanctions on all of Israel, Israeli companies, academia, uh, cultural institutions. And then there's this decades-old boycott movement uh, 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 that really began in Israeli civil society uh, calling for a boycott of settlement products, of settlements in occupied territory. Um, that's number one. This month, though, we've heard numbers coming from the Israeli government saying that yearly BDS could cost about one and a half billion dollars. That's, you know, when you talk to, about other, other research out there from RAND, for example, you're talking about closer to $4.7 billion per year uh, that they're estimating that BDS is going to cost. Uh, we've, seen, uh, we've seen these numbers coming out, and what we're looking at is a very real uh, movement that's really going to and has, in fact, already affected Israel and, uh, and the settlements. Well, to both of you, how serious is that for the Israeli economy? The, this movement? I think it's very serious. I think uh, let, let's set aside the fact that this is probably one of the most disingenuous political movements in, in play in the world today. It's uh, to, to focus this level of attention on this particular conflict when there's easily 200 conflicts in the world that are causing vastly more human suffering where there is one side that is clearly egregiously uh, taking advantage of some sort of uh, 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 you know strategic advantage against another side, it's 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 uh, disingenuous to put the focus on this conflict. That said, it's real. Uh, whether it's just or not, it's real. Uh, I think we cross economic thresholds without realizing it all the time, uh, and only in retrospect, or only maybe sometimes in retrospect, you realize that you've crossed a threshold. And for those, uh, you know, in the Knesset to uh, say that this is not, you know, not such a big deal and the whole world is not going to drop us and America is not going to drop us. I mean, let's just do some very simple math. About 40 percent of our economy is export. About a third of our exports go to Europe. Forty times a third is about 12, 13 percent. Twelve or 13 percent of GDP, of Israeli GDP, is exports to Europe. We don't need the whole world to boycott us. We don't need all of Europe to boycott us. If we could cut, tr if, 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 if this movement can, uh, succeeds in cutting, let's say, 20 percent or a quarter of our trade with Europe, that's three or four percent off of Israeli GDP. That puts us into recession. We are in recession if that happens. That, that's a big deal. We haven't experienced that in a very long time. And this is not a quick cyclical recession like we experienced in 2008. This is something that likely stays 
uh, until we remove it. This is maybe damage that never gets undone. So, so this is quite real. We should be taking it seriously. Well, that is a very strong point. I what just, would you add? Uh, one, one question, actually. Uh, you know, just yesterday, the Senate put through this uh, fast track of, a, of the EU-US free trade deal uh, that's going to the president's desk. One of the stipulations in that is saying that European uh, countries are not going to be allowed to boycott Israel. It's a very general, it doesn't say a lot whether they're talking about uh, the boycott of settlements, whether they're talking about the BDS movement. That aside, do you think this kind of stipulation is actually going to curb this, uh, this kind of movement towards uh, boycott? Short answer, I don't know. Uh, we have a very good friend and strong ally in the United States. L that's wonderful. L let's not get complacent about that. At the end of the day, there are limits to what uh, political enforcement can do. If a supermarket chain in Ireland decides that they're not going to buy Israeli products, there's nothing the government of the United States can do to, uh, to change that. This is definitely becoming a popular movement, again, driven by perhaps misconceptions or, or maybe even, even something worse. We've got to put that aside for a second and, 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 and really realize what the, what the potential threat is to us. There's really nothing we or the U.S. government can do on, on, on that level. Uh, to stop that, so you're right that I think if, if uh, you know if, if 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 the Belgian government decides to impose some sort of uh, trade restrictions on Israel, then the Americans can be effective at blocking that. If it's popular, then, then there's really nothing the Americans do, can well, do to help us. Certainly, this movement also impacts Palestinians. Absolutely. And uh, we saw that with the big controversy that uh, we saw with Scarlett Johansson. Right. Uh, what what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I would lump that into the dis disingenuous bucket. You know, we, uh, I, I really think that this movement is not about uh, uh, promoting Palestinian welfare. It's really against Israel. This is not a for movement. This is an against movement. Is there a movement that is in the financial sector that is promoting Palestinian welfare? You know, ironically, I think m m most activity in the financial sector that promotes Palestinian welfare is Israeli. Um, and uh, I would say there's probably a lot more going on. I I've never measured this, and I wonder if, if anyone has, um, in general, or for promoting welfare in Palestinian society that emanates in Israel than anywhere else, including in, in, the, in the Arab world. But again, that's, that, that, that might be beside the point uh, of the BDS movement. So you're t talking in terms of investments in the Palestinian territories? Talking More about investments area, and talking about correct? employment, exactly. Well, tell us about some of your areas of interest there. What areas, what sectors of that economy you're investing in? Well, I, I can speak only very broadly um, because we don't identify our partners uh, publicly for, for political reasons there. Uh, we're invested in the energy sector. Uh, we think this entire region, this kind of whole entire kind of Levantine region, is, uh, 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 is going toward a gas-driven economy for, for obvious reasons. That will be the cheapest, cleanest, uh, best source of energy uh, in this region. And uh, we have invested in, in the infrastructure that will necessarily underlie that. Um, We've uh, looked at a number of other spaces, including food and agriculture. Well, it's very fascinating. Yeah. We'll be sure to have you on the program to Good. discuss that more in depth. That wraps up our show today. Do stay tuned tomorrow for all the latest in global business and innovation here from the Jaffa Port in Tel Aviv. I'm Natalie Ehrlich. Thank you for watching.